the exclusive property leverage channel with George Gannon. Education, integrity, results. Your number one place for all things property. Hello, George Gannon here and welcome to the Property Leverage Channel. This is episode 0.0. Let me share with you why me, why Property Leverage, why listen to us. Well, basically, I started off with zero. I left school with not the best qualifications. I just came from humble beginnings, a council house, and I managed to go out on my own without anyone helping me, showing me, telling me what to do. I managed to go out and build a 3.6 million pound property portfolio from scratch. And that was before the age of 26. I'd also say I did this via one of the hardest strategies that are out there in the property industry. And that is commercial to residential conversion. So I went out finding old dilapidated commercial buildings such as pubs or uh, closed down care homes and I converted them. I I managed to get planning permission on them. So they were speculative, they had a certain use class in commercial and I managed to get planning permission and uh, building control so we could convert them from commercial to residential units and I just repeated the process. So one of the ways that a lot of people manage to become financially free, and that is finding a system that works and repeating it. And that worked for me. Albeit, this is possibly one of the hardest models or strategies that are out there. But for me, if I was asked again, what would you do with your time again, George? I'd do exactly what I have done, because it's worked. Now, with property leverage, I will be sharing with you not just commercial conversion because I've got another channel which is just for commercial to residential conversion but with property leverage we're going to be sharing with you everything to do with property I'm going to be telling you about what works what doesn't work a little bit of insider information in the industry because when the recession happened I also got wiped out and I lost absolutely everything. And it was at this point I went looking for answers and I came across these gurus and I was thinking, who are you guys to tell me what to do? I've I've done all this before you've even started. But I listened to them and the truth is there was some really good quality information that they gave out. And it is so easy to become complacent. It is so easy to believe you know everything because you've experienced success because you've done it because you've been doing it well the truth is you don't you have to keep at the top of your well if you want to be at the top of your game you have to keep educating yourself you have to keep reinvesting your time your energy your money into educating yourself and the the Things are constantly changing. Nothing is permanently flat and still. Uh, Just one little change in uh, legislation that that comes in with the government can possibly wipe some people out. So, and it was certainly the case with the recession. Every single development I did was perfect. They all went exceptionally well. The only thing that caught me out was after I'd done the developments and the funding tap literally got turned off overnight. Money just dried up everywhere and property prices start to crash and I couldn't repeat my model that had worked so well for me. So this is when I went looking for the answers. So what I will do in this episode is share with you five secrets to becoming financially free. Yeah, so five different strategies and the, the f- four of them aren't property related on how to become financially free. So this is my insight, my gift here. Uh, if some people are thinking is property for me or not. Well, why do you want to get into property? What, why do property? For a lot of people, it is a route 
for finan financial freedom. It's a route to become financially free, to not have to work anymore, to live off your income. So it's all about that income stream. So you've, you've, you really want to get into the quadrant where you're an investor and that money that you're putting in is making you money while you sleep. And then the next day, um, the, that, that money and that profit, what you do with it is you reinvest it back into more investments. You don't increase your lifestyle. And that's one of the traps that a lot of people fall into. They'll make more money and then as soon as they've got that money, they'll go and spend it on a better car, a better house, better holidays. So it's all about planning and understanding how to become financially free. So I'll, I'll share a lot more of this in the episodes that are to come. But at the moment, since you've been good, I'm going to share with you five secrets on how to become financially free. Number one you can invest in stocks or shares. Now, it's said that 80% of people who invest in the stock market actually lose. And it's said that it's somewhat gambling to go into that. Now, the 20% that win, it's most likely gonna be the insider traders. Uh, you, you saw the bankers who were rigging LIBOR, uh, etc. and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So, unless you're the next Warren Buffin, an individual, which I hate to break it to you, you, you most likely not. <laughs> for, for me personally, because I know property, the stock market is gambling. So that's one option. The second is compounded interest. So if you have a lump of capital at the moment, let's say it's 50,000, and if you wanted to invest that something that give you a, in, into something that gave you a set monthly or annual return on your money and then left that money with your existing money eventually that would compound and depending where you invested it potentially in 30 to 40 years you could possibly have a million pounds in the bank and you could retire what's the problem with that well you say it to people that are getting on in life a little bit and they're like george we don't have 30 to 40 years you say it to someone that's a bit younger and they say, George, I can't wait 30, 40 years, I need it now. Well, the, the, so that one tends to go out the window for a lot of people. There is no such thing as a get rich quick scheme. So every strategy you do takes time, persistence and dedication. The third one is investing in new business startups. Now it is typically experienced investors that have built their own company, know about properties, sold their company and they have a big lump of money left and they're feeling a bit bored and they want to get that excitement back. Now they actually say when they invest in businesses, say they'll, they'll look to spread the risk invest in 10 companies, they will expect about 70% uh, seven of them companies to fail and then they'll maybe expect one or two of the companies to be like the living dead, not growing, not dying, just, just existing. And then it's that one company that they're looking for the investment in that's absolutely gonna skyrocket. So again, that's, that's high risk, high return and not for everyone. The third one, oh, sorry, the fourth one even, and the one that I absolutely love and recommend and stand by is property. A solid bricks and mortar, investment. Now within property there's different areas and different strategies. For me I went with commercial to residential conversion taking big boarded up commercial properties and converting them into residential and that worked really well for me. So that's the, the, the method that I advocate and the, the logic behind this is let's say there's an office block out there and it's got a blue chip tenant in uh, a, a, a chain of accountants and they're paying a hundred thousand rent well roughly about 10 percent yield return it'll value it around a million let's say now prior to the recession um these companies were going out of business and when they did suddenly they'd move out of the property 
and this commercial building that was valued at a million suddenly doesn't have that value anymore because there's no cash flow coming in, no tenant. So it'll drop by half. So it's now there on the market for half a million. Then what happens? The kids get in, they smash it up, um, it gets damaged and sometimes that value can drop again by another half. So it's now worth a quarter of the price. You come along, you get planning permission on that block of um, uh, offices it, to convert it into say 20 apartments and the value for residential to commercial is worth more. You spend maybe three quarters of a million doing it up and it's worth a million and a half. This is certainly up north. I know people in London are thinking, George, where, where are these properties you're telling me about? Um, so for me, a very simple, traditional, um, honest approach to property, and it works. Is it easy? <laughs> is it simple? Will it happen overnight? No, every everything takes time, and everything usually can be hard work to start with until you understand it and you, you get your systems and procedures in place. And the fifth, I hear you asking, what's the fifth one, George? Well, you can go out and you can win the lottery. So, hopefully I've shared a little bit of insight and knowledge as to who I am, what property leverage is going to be about, and there's going to be some huge, great value adds and insights into the property industry in our coming episode. So make sure you please hit the subscribe button and hit a like if, if um, whichever platform we're on and you join us for the, the next episode because I'm all about giving, I'm all about sharing and I'm here to help. Thank you.